Aha, we seem to be live. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. I hope you're all well, fit, and indeed healthy. Or, you know, similar. Uh, right, what we're doing. Okay, pause that, play that, and get that ready. Okay. Right, what we have here is the C64, or the C64 Maxi, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, quite a few people have been asking me, oh, I've got this game, I've got that game, it won't run. This won't work, that won't work. Uh, the joystick don't work, I can't select things. And, uh, uh, well, various questions like that. So I thought I'd have a look at one of these. So I've picked Gauntlet at random. Uh, it's not a game I ever played back in the day. I know what it is. I used to play at the arcades a little bit. It's not my sort of thing, really. I know what it is. I'm aware of it. The C64 wasn't much of a version, I didn't think. But anyway, that's not why we're here. Um, so, one of the peculiarities, or quirks, if you like, about the C64, the C64 Maxi, is... Um, that it has USB ports instead of joystick ports. Now what that means is of course that when you plug the joystick in it automatically defaults to joystick 2 which is fine as 90% of Commodore 64 games are indeed joystick port 2. However some are joystick port 1. So how do we do that? Well there's a neat little trick and the trick is you lose well let's have a look at the problem first and then we'll f look at how to cure it. So we'll load up. We have three versions of Gauntlets. The bottom version of Gauntlet is one I've changed, so, but we'll come to that in a moment. Let's look at um, one version. This is loading from 720k formatted floppy disk. Um, now, floppy disk problems are. Uh, another video that's coming up. I need to do a little bit of work on that. A lot of people are having issues with floppy disks, but I'll come back to that. I know why it is. Right, what do we got? The incredible five, five two one one. I don't know what that is. Ripping group, I guess. Hacking group. Aphrodite DCS HB. No music. Anyway, who cares? Let's Oh my gosh, that's a bit loud. Let me turn that down. Uh, T for trainer, N for normal. Let's go N for normal. That's definitely gone, let's... Ben Douglish music, game programming, Bob Amore. That's Amore. 1985. Okay, now this is interesting. Player 1 is joystick 1, player 2 is joystick 2. Again, the C64 Maxi um, only has USBs, and by default, every joystick is joystick 2. Leave disk in drive. Press space to continue. OK. OK, so if this requires joystick 1, we're in joystick 2. And there we go, that's the problem. Nada. Nothing works. OK. So let's go now. So that is just that is um, a hacked image of Gauntlet from back in the day. This is a hacked image from Gauntlet back in the day. Seemingly the same in image. Oh, no, it's not. So this is another one. Let's try that. How do you load it? Oh, that one. I can hear the disk drive clicking away. I think it's loading. Oh, there we go. Loading eight comma one cracked in nineteen eighty fifteenth of December nineteen eighty six by the dynamic duo. 
who are of course world famous. There we go. Exactly the same. Okie dokie. So, now if we look at my gauntlet, this is, um, I think, a direct rip of the game. It's got no cracking group name at the side of it, so I guess it's just an original hack. I don't know. Original copy, rather. But what we have at the bottom, we have gauntlet underscore M6. M6 is the code name given to me and the Commodore 64, I think. Let me just read the manual, so I'm not talking Billy Bull. Uh, right, M6 denotes the model to be a C64. If it was MV, then it would be a VIC-20. If it had TN on there, then it would be NTSC. If it has TP, then it is PAL. So we have M6, Commodore 64. We have TP, which is PAL. And we have J1. Now, what does J1 mean? J1 sets the primary joystick port to joystick port 1. If it was J2, it would set the joystick port to port 2. So, let's try this bad boy. Oh, there we go. That was a fast load, wasn't it? So now we have joystick control. Or gauntlet control, as it is actually moving a gauntlet. And a gauntlet, for people who don't know, is either um, a heavy clad, clad leather glove which uh, I uh, used to use at work, or it is the glove of a knight. That is also a gauntlet, but it's a heavy set glove. Choose player. Thor. Am I going to be... I'm going to be an elf. And it's Christmas every day for an elf. Rewind tape. I ain't got tape. What are you talking about? There we go. That is. Is that an elf? What's that at the bottom of the screen? I think that's a monster at the bottom of the screen trying to get me. It's a glitch. Oh, lots of baddies. Oh, I should get them with my super thing, arrow. Uh, I don't really remember. Well, I do remember all about this, to be honest. Oop, oh, key. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. So there we go. There are the settings. Oh. I don't like the graphics in this game. I think it's awful, to be honest. The graphics are ugly. The colours are gross. But anyway. That's why I never played it. Whee! Cheek bugger. I did quite enjoy this in the arcades, but the graphics were a lot nicer. Obviously. And you could play with four friends. Now I'm not sure how two player would work. Uh, I guess if you just plug another joystick in, do I have one? I don't think I do. Uh, might have. Let me have a look. Just bear with me. That's not annoying, is it? Get over there. So if I plug another joystick in, well actually it's a gamepad, I don't know if this works. Oh. My Logitech. No, that don't work. Actually, let's try the Logitech. This is Logitech F... 
310. Let's just swap joysticks for sheer novelty value. Absolutely nothing, but that's okay. I do have another joystick from the C64 Mini, but that's uh, balancing nicely on top of my monitor with uh, loads of boxes on there, so I'm not going to move that. Will it detect your joystick when you unplug it? Ah, oh, that's interesting. So it's giving me a player two. Oh, so it does work. So if I plug the USB back into where it was, <laughs> no, it doesn't give me another player one. It just gives me another uh, continues with player two. But anyway, so people are having issues with uh, joysticks not working and things. That will be why. You need to set. Uh, you need to set your controls to M6 TPJ1 in capitals and underscore after the game name. Doesn't matter what the game name is. It could be, I don't know. Who cares? It could be anything. Star Wars. Uh, I don't know. Whatever you like. Uh, underscore M6 TPJ1, and that will give you C64 PAL J1. If you run an NTSC, I guess it would be it wouldn't be that at all, would it? What's NTSC? Did I say NTSC would be TN? So there we are. Uh, hi there, guys. Sorry, I've not been keeping up with one of the um, one of the uh, one of the comments. Uh, Conrad, hi, Conrad. How are you doing? I hope you're well. Uh, Gemet, uh, that's one of the things about the device I kind of lament. I wish they'd just let people pick a USB connector per joystick or be able to attach whenever you want, but no, you can't. The device recognizes whatever joystick you use to start the game and assigns it to port 2. Uh, yes, it does. But then, you know, most games are joystick port 2, aren't they? Which, by the way, means that if you wanted to use a non-standard stick, it doesn't have the extra buttons. That's true. That's true. That is very true. Um, I don't know which joysticks or joypads work with this thing. As I use their joystick. Um, I think some of the gamepads do allow you to select menu from some of the different buttons. But don't quote me on that. I don't really know. I haven't tried. So, what have we got here? Let's... Get rid of Gauntlet, because it's a bit rubbish. Cannot read USB stick, that would be ridiculous. There we go. Sometimes it takes a minute or two for it to connect and sort itself out. Max Basic. I did buy Max Basic, by the way, a while ago. I've never used it. Going off topic here somewhat, I do apologise. Oh no, that's incorrect. Max Basic is for the um, the Japanese console. I'm thinking Simon's Basic. Stupido. Okay. Um. Sure, I played all these, didn't I? Christmas time. I don't remember playing Buggy Boy. Let's have a go at Buggy Boy, see if that works. Again, if it requires joystick port 2, we're knackered. Uh, 1, sorry, we're knackered. Anyway, give it a go, see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? 
nothing starts for a start. That's the worst that could happen. So, how are you all this morning? Is everyone well? Recovered from Christmas and so on and so forth? Uh, Jimmet, uh, for instance, I am sort of... Oh, hello. That's a bit loud. Um, for instance, I am sort of forced to play the floppy version of some, uh, for my Sam's Journey copy because I intend to play with my Speedlink joystick. It does have a button D, quick start, which launches CRTs. Okay. Joystick issue aside, I employed, uh, I enjoyed playing Ultima 5 locked on my shiny new the 64. I'm doing well, I hope you are too. I'm very well, thank you very much. Ultima 5. See, I never ever play the Ultima games. Am I missing something? Uh, but I'm too busy anyway. I'm currently writing, or will hope to be writing an adventure game and cross-compiling it to the 64, Spectrum, and maybe one or two others. I did enjoy Buggy Boy, actually. Let's go high scores. This was great on the 64. Oh, oh. Don't fall in the water. Oh, you fell in the water. Oh, come on. Oh. Puts a wall on a racetrack. That's a health and safety nightmare. Great on the Amiga too, I think. Oh come on, uh, Gemma, you're writing adventure text. Yes, I am. I am writing a text adventure, and it will have, I hope. graphics um, but it's very early stages it will be later in the year when this appears come on buggy boy I have lots of imagination, but uh, low skill in writing, so I've been directed to uh, some software that will help me, I hope. But we'll see. I have to learn how to use the software first. I could write an adventure game in basic. Not a problem. But I don't want to do that particularly. Very clever, but they put the time gates yeah, behind obstacles or, encur or encourage you to jump over things that will uh, make a crash. Right. Well, like I say, this was purely about how to... Oh, loads of stuff. Um, how to run... Uh, uh, how to run programs with the joystick. So... Um, uh, is it the rough outline of a story of your adventure game an okay question to ask about of course it is uh, I have two on the go two ideas two plans that I've been formulating over many years one of them is a story about the Titanic not quite sure if it's an escape from the Titanic to get to a boat perhaps or whether it's some other twist 
on the story. I mean, the boat will still set off, still sink. Um, but whether it's to find something on the boat or rescue someone or the boat or whatever, I'm not sure yet. Uh, but the other, but with that, I'd like to um, map the Titanic accurately. So I'm not sure if that's too much of a big task to start with. Uh, and the other one will be um, a general space adventure where you're perhaps trapped on a lone spacecraft or a space station um, with some peril of some kind. Um, like I say, I've only just recently started writing uh, and trying new software to see how it works. So I suck at the moment with my programming, but it's quite script-based, so it shouldn't be too much of a chore. It's just finding the commands and how it works, and it's little. Everything has its own little quirks and and um, features. Um, Gemet, I have the quill here, and I was considering attempting to write a tiny adventure using it. Do it. I'd recommend anyone who's got any interest in writing anything just to go do it. Because if you don't, if you don't, quite simply, you never will. And there's no time like the present. Get on with it. Uh, James. Hi, James. Titanic as a platformer like Magic Knight or Jet Set really would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure how you'd set the... Set the mood. Drive error. That was so stupid. Well, I never. International Karate. There was an issue with Outrun, I think, as well. I'm not sure if that worked. Don't remember. Pirates is one of my favourites. Love Pirates. Talking of adventures, this is one of my favourites. It's a budget game. Well, oh, balls. A budget game from um, from the UK in the olden days. <laughs> Sound very right, is it? Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, Jimette, personally, I sort of celebrate every game on the Commodore that isn't either a shooter or a platformer. You see the popular genres because we have so many great ones. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. Um, I love adventures. That that is how I was kind of brought up with low power, low power computers. You'd have uh, the TI-99, the VIC-20, the, I don't know, ZX Spectrum, 16Ks, the Oryx, and all that sort of thing from the early days. Low memory. Uh, and there were a lot of adventures. Um, and that's how I was introduced to computers, really. We had uh, BBC Micros in schools in 1985, I guess. I just got my TI-99. And I had about three games for it. One was Parsec, a space shooter. And another one was a, a budget collection of games by Virgin. And it had Starship Supernova, which is a game that I remade a number of years later and ported it to the Amiga. I'm not sure if I ever did it on the 64, I can't remember. But um, I'd like to go back to that sort of thing and, and do some more. Get the Googles. Uh... What? Oh, I spelled it wrong. Go I have put Googles. <laughs> Let's try that again. That's the first issue. Uh, Harper scrabbled. Scrabbled? What did he scramble? Scrabble? He scrabbled about in the dark until he found his night sights. Where? Let's see if he understands a night sight. This is the first problem. I can't spell. Where night sights? I bet it doesn't know what night sights are. <laughs> okay. Oh, he does know what night sights are. Fair enough. 
Uh, Elliot was nearby, lying in the rubble. There was blood in his clothes. Feebly, he beckoned Harper closer. Listen. Rigelians have doomsday device. Anyway. So, yeah. So, it's this sort of thing. What I would like to do is have, if possible, graphics at the top with text at the bottom. Um, and that's what I plan to try to do. If I can't do that, then I'd like a screenshot, a, 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 you know, a screen image. And then the text on the next page, maybe. Oop. Are you sure? Yes. You scored one. Turns four. So yeah, so there we go. 1987. 1987. So this must be one of the last games that I ever got for the 64 then. Because in, 80, in February 88, I had the Amiga, Amiga 500. So, there we go. That was the end of my Commodore 64. Well, that's not true. I did get another 64 a year later. Right, I'm going to go to one of my favourites. And then I think that will do for today. It was just... I'm going off topic because it's not a very interesting topic. But, um, yeah, the commands for the C64, obviously... Uh, control the vice emulator and specify whether it's PAL, NTSC, joystick 1, joystick 2. Uh, and AD is accurate drive emulation, which some machines, which some games need, of course. Uh, that looks a real, uh, Jamet, that looks a really nice adventure game right there. Never heard of that one. What's it called? I missed the name. It's called Rigel's Revenge. It's a PAL game released by Mastertronic in 1987 and it is superb it is very very good most enjoyable it's one of the few adventures I keep coming back to I mean The Hobbit um, was another one uh, the Amiga had its own adventure games the uh, you know the um, Guild of Thieves and so on and so forth Jinxter which I loved oh I loved them so much rubbish at them but enjoyed them So yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing today, as well as doing some work on a CD32 laser. I always get stuck behind things, which irritates me usually. It's only me who gets stuck on the scenery on this bloody game. What's going on? Um, I don't mind all these J1 switches. The lot on the C64. I wish they didn't use the small options window. Yeah, so do I. If you had an options window to select joystick. Um, and all the other options, it would make life so much easier. I'll give over. Miles away. Oh, come on, I'll, well, I, I did walk into that in fairness. To be fair, you know, I'm stuck on the scenery again. Is that it? About. Beautiful. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Why don't the hand grenades work? Beautiful. Broke through the second area, now rush. 
third area. Okie dokie. Oh. oh, come on. I was, oh, I was reading the messages then. Too hostile this environment, ridiculous. I don't seem to have any hand grenades, which is bit hurts. Yep. Is that it? That's it. Oh, space bar for grenades. Oh, bugger. Forgot about that. Oh, well. That's the furthest I've got for many years. Oh, no numbers. So there we go, kids. Um, Commando was way too difficult for me, says Gemma. It is quite difficult. Who dares wins was a bit slower. More like my reaction timing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Danielson, never liked Commando, it's just a bit lacking something. What are you talking about, Danielson? Commando is awesome. Spacebar for grenades, as heard where. Uh, oh. Like I say, it's been a long time. Oh, top of the list, look at that. Oh no, not again. Reset. Multiple disk drives would be quite handy as well, if anyone's listening from the team. Perhaps th two or three disk slots or something. Nope. Side A. Load. Uh, yeah. The Federation against copyright. <laughs> the Federation against copyright. I used to have an action replay on Commando, save game, so that I could wrap the score and grena uh, grenade counters. <laughs> Eagle Soft. Uh, the good old days, James. Are you going to any shows this year, James? Are any of you guys going to any shows? Are you any of you guys UK based or are you all over our sunny world? Well this morning a little bit frosty world. Not sure what's going on there. Yeah, I used to have an action replay too. It was great for backing up games or freezing them. When you got to a good point you needed to save it. Well, I don't think that's loaded properly. Uh, Daniel said, an action replay sounds like a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Defender of the Crown, one of the few still playable action strategy games, uh, strategy games on the 64. Uh, I tried to go back to SCI, SSI strategy. I guess they were early works. Yeah, I used to. I did used to like S S is it, uh, SSI, SC. I can't remember. Was it SSI SCI? Well, that doesn't seem to work, does it? Let's see if Pirates works. Another one of my favourites from the olden days. Uh, yeah. I. I mean, yeah. Defender of the Crown is the reason. Convinced Mum to help me buy a, an Amiga in 1980, early 88. I just started my first job. On one of the versions, there's a, an image of the ship and it creaks. I don't know if that's a CD32 version. Might be. Uh, let's start a new career. English book in here. What is your name? 
Uh, oh, we can't fit it all in. Oh, Mike, it is. I shall be a journeyman, and I have skill at fencing. Yeah, SSI made a lot of good games. They did. I did have quite a few SSI games. Um, though I don't actually remember any of them. I did have the Annals of Rome and uh, Guadalcanal and um, all kinds of things. You decide to escape this life of debt slavery. You ask to become a local seaman. Seaman stains. You carefully consult your notes and reply. When does the treasure free to lie arrive at Caracas in 1660, Mr. Mike? I would say that sounds like an April sort of time. I would say probably early in the month due to the seasonal tides. The smugglers sneer at your ignorance. It's a little bit harsh, but need a strong bag to help them. Okay. All right, fair enough. Oh, come on. Defeated, you and a few supporters are put in a small leaky boat. Taunts and jeers and laughter ring out. That's very harsh. I shall continue my promising uh, career. Insert disc two. I shall. I shall do just that. Uh, and go back, I guess. Press trigger. The sailing master takes you aside here in Port Royal. You probably want. Oh, okay. This must be the disc's ver. Well, it is the disc version. I have the cassette version. I don't remember having these lengthy descriptions. Um, I guess that's uh, most famous for the gold box role-playing games like Crin Saga, Pool of Ah, Pool of Radiance, of course. Uh, really narrative folk to RPGs with a fat printed book for story. Yeah. Eye of the Beholder. And that's still coming for the C64. Eye of the Beholder. <laughs> okay. My dear Mr. Mike, we're at war with the Spanish and we're at war with the Dutch. Okay, that's all I need to know, young sir. Let's visit the tavern. Sign them up. So they look like a sturdy set of chaps. No, thank you. Not just at the moment. Part of an old map. No, bugger off. England is at war with Spain. Okay. Malaria in Gibraltar. Fair enough. Um, let us leave town. No, trade with them. Uh, no, leave town. Let's go sink some ships. Splendid, here we go. What's happened? Investigate. The galleon. Investigate that sucker. It's the cowardly pirate hunter, Colonel Mendoza. Mendoza? He's chasing his captain. We shall close the battle. Which one am I? I'm at the bottom, I guess. I can't shoot. I've got no guns. This was not a wise decision. I shall escape. Toot sweet. Full sails. This is not going to look good. Ten. There we go. Can we go faster? Can we go? Oh no. Ten. Keep ten. Run like the wind, Forrest, for we are in peril. <laughs> I took it for granted that the ship would have cannons. It has none. So we will turn tail and bugger off. Um, it's true. If you want to see a high-quality port from the Mega to 64, look, almost finished Eye of the Beholder on YouTube. I couldn't believe me, eye, my eyes. It was C64. Really? I thought you were 
having me on. Let me. Ah, there we are. Let me look at that. I have the beholder. I've got YouTube running twice for some bizarre reason. Press trigger c to continue. Let's go back to port. Buy some cannons. For I cannot fight without cannons. We shall sail into harbour. Why? What have I done? Oh, for God's sake. Everyone's against you in this game. Right, excuse me. While I blare into the Canada. Uh, the Canada. The, ca the camera. I... Eye of the P holder C sixty four. Well, I never. Will you take me back as captain? I should bloody think so as well. No, just continue. You've arrived, okay. Um, English flag. Oh, for God's sake, what are you shooting at me for? So the English don't like me now. Bloody English, they're a fickle bunch. June 1661. Perhaps you can complete one more voyage. All right, let's bugger off. I don't know what the buttons are for this game. I used to have, uh, I used to know this intimately. This game. Oh, here we go. Uh, ship's log. Party status. We have. Eight cannons. Splendid. Continue travels. Right, let's hunt down some... Oi, get off. Bloody wind. Uh, yeah, I've just looked at some screenshots of Eye of the Beholder. It does look quite impressive, I must admit. Uh, it's gone completely under the radar. I did not know. I remember it on the Amiga. Again, that's another game I've never played. Come on, there must be some English scumbags here I can shoot after they've turned on me. It was too windy, sailing against the wind. Oh, there should be some ships hither. Get off, wind. Anyway. Uh, how long videos have it been played in YouTube, if you're curious? Yeah, I shall have a look. I'm quite interested. Plundering the sea. Yeah, I'm trying to plunder the seas, but there's not much going on. Follow the wind. I think the premise of the game, the game is you're a, you can either be a pirate or a career sailor. Uh, but the ultimate go goal is to find your sister by piecing together small portions of a map that is sold to you in taverns whilst chasing down um, a main pirate who captured your sister. Uh, and in the meantime you can get married, um, you can buy land. July 1661. The men are growing restless, Captain. Methinks there'll be a mutiny. That's not a problem, dear chap. Not a problem. We shall investigate the bark. Spanish, we shall close for battle, chaps. Let's go. Get the first volley off. Beautiful. Oh, missed. Darn it. Buggers. 
Come on, boys. Oh, shit. Come on, chaps. Reload, reload. Oh, that's that's a that's a miss by Country Moil. Oh, we can clutch six, eight. Oh, bugger! That's a hit. Oh, come on! Oh, Billy Bull. Oh, bullshit. What's going on here? That's a hit. That's a spot on target. Yes. No damage, no damage. We'll get them. Oh, that's rubbish. Four. Wind speed four. Five. Nice. Sail damage. That's excellent. Broadside them, sir. Broadside. Beautiful. Look at that. Oh, come on. That's bull. There's a certain amount of favoritism going on. How come they can get every shot in and I can't? That's rubbish. Yes. No damage. Come on, get another... Vo oh, that's going to miss. Four, therefore. Yeah, you can upgrade your cannons to have better... Um, shot. And uh, you can, what they call it, fit chains to the ball, so when you fire them, they... Like they're doing the films, they swing around and rip the masterpieces, whatever they're called. And your ship will slowly start to sink, and the mass will fail. Come on, boys. Yes. Come on, chaps. Nicely done. Oh, lovely. We've got it now. We've got a Zion. We've got a Zion. That's got him. Yes. Come on, boys. They can outrun us. Broadside. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, yes. I've got six men. They've got 19. I've got one gun and they've got six. So they can do considerably more damage than I. Oh, come on now. Pack it in. It's going to start sinking soon. Yeah, they've got six cannons. I have but one pew shooter. Nice. Kill one of them. Reloading. Guns loaded. So they've got a full set of masks. I've lost a mask, so that'll be a, sp a speed penalty there. Hull leaking. Don't let them board, don't let them board. Oh, they're going to board. Minus one? Oh, for God's sake. Do they surrender? The two ships crash together and boarding parties leap over the rails. In a swirl of smoke of battle, you spot the enemy captain approaching. And I shall kick his lady ass. Let's go. Come on, boys. Yes. Ah, uh, you shall fall before me, Captain. Oh, for God's sake. Failed again. Oh, dear. Oh, well, I'm banged up now. That's it. Your men flee in panic as the tide of battle turns against them. You bravely fight on and are wounded. You are imprisoned in San Catalina. Months pass as you await your fate. Oh, well. That's the end of that, I guess. Each month seems an eternity, advancing age and old battle wounds combine to sap your strength. 
perhaps you can complete one more voyage. Press the trigger to continue. Aye, Captain. Well, let's have a look at this, see what's... Party stats. We have 10 pieces of coal. We have 8 cannons. We have an unhappy crew of 16 men. Looking good, all in all, I think. I have a sloop, which is a piece of junk ship. Uh, continue. Um, this is one of my favourite games, historically speaking. I've probably spent more time with this than any other game, apart from possibly Sim City. Sail ho! She looks like a carbo flute, Captain. Let's investigate. Dutch, we shall close for battle. And we shall whoop them. Come on, chaps. Let's whoop away. Beautiful. The first volley, an opening volley. Yes, and a hit. Ah, ah, ah. We shall have a, another volley, I think. 16 men, 16 men. Not sure if that's the right angle. Oh no, we'll get there. Oui. Three guns, for God's sake. Nice. Five guns. Oh, beautiful. No damage. Oh. Never understood why the ships didn't have cannons on the on the rear stern. You could fire a few volleys off as the ships are escaping. Fifteen men. I mean, that's what I'd do if I was a Capitaine. I suppose it, it might unsteady the ship, I guess. I don't know. Why would it? I don't know. I don't know that it would. Shoot from the stern, it'll propel it forward. Come on, boys. Oh, come on. Bullshit. Come on, chaps. Oh. Yeah. Three guns. Oh, that's a hit. Yes. No damage. Come on, boys. Oh. Fifteen men, twelve men. That's a hit. Oh! Oh, this will be a good one. Come on, boys. Oh, missed. It's ridiculous. Should nip up there. Now. Nice. 14 men. No damage. They're sturdy ships. Come on, boys. Ooh, that's a miss. Battle sails, so they can turn sharper. I'm full sails for speed. That's a hit. Oh, that's going to hit. Damn it. Sail damage. Oh, they can, they're going to outrun me now, aren't they? Oh, come on. Uh, 
Bosch. Bullshizer, I tell you. Yes, nice. Hmm. Uh, I believe uh, sailors were usually hand chosen, and it was preferable they couldn't swim, or well, it would mean they defend the ship harder. Yeah, there was also a superstition that if you could swim, you would invite the doom of the ship or something, some such nonsense. So sailors preferred not to be able to swim, although most people couldn't swim in those days anyway. I mean, this is the buccaneer pirate era, where sailors were press ganged, bashed on the back of the head, and ended up on a boat when they got out for a loaf of bread, nipping down the shops for you know twenty wood binds, and you wake up on your way to Argentina. Oh, oh, nice, nicely avoided. Nine men, three guns. Yeah, they're going to hit, aren't they? Yeah, I knew it. That's going to miss. Knew it. I need to get their crew down. If possible. This is a long game. We used to play this for hours, unsurprisingly. You can see why playing this. Oh, nice. That's a good hit. Oh. Why don't you just surrender? Clearly I'm superior with my sail damage and le less guns. That's a good one. When you upgrade your ships, and you can have bigger ships, bigger cannons, and bigger, I don't know, bigger balls, um, bigger cannon balls, and all that sort of thing. Just one hit will almost ruin a ship. It's fantastic. It's very good. It's great fun. This is not very interesting. I was going to quickly sink this ship. And then I could end the stream. This could well be a 24 hour stream going at this pace. Sloop is four. Flute, two. Okay. So I'm faster than they are. Nice. Lost a mast. Oh, it's the Battle of Attrition. Two guns, eight men. Guns loaded. Come on, boys, reload. Quickly. Nice. I don't think I can sink this bloody thing. Bombjack DX for the 64. Didn't know there was such a thing. I didn't like Bombjack on the 64. I thought the graphics were hideous. The Spectrum version is superior in every way. It's fast. The graphics are prettier. Um, smoother to play. Excellent. I've not. I'm not sure. I'm aware of uh, Bombjack DX. I must admit. Oh, nice. Not with your naff off. Oh, come now. Pish. Oh, yes. Don't get too close, we'll board. Oh, board anyway. God's sake. Okay, the two ships crash together. 
I thought he'd surrender with my superior. I should use a long sword, I think. Go on, boys. Nice. Nice. And again, and again, and again. Get him. Come on. Nice. Nice. Lovely. Shaken. Wild. Yes. Got him. <laughs> well done, chaps. Captain, we've captured four gun cargo flute. We have 80 tons of space for 24 tons. Uh, <sighs> what shall we do? Plunder and sinker. Okay. Leave behind. We shall have lots of food. We shall take some goods. Take all their cannons. One ship lost. I don't care. As long as we've got the best ship, that's all that matters. With your last ship gone, you were washed ship. What? Oh, the other ships. <laughs> the other ship sank. Oh, for God's sake. Anyway. Pish. Perhaps you can complete one more voyage. Anyway, that's enough. I could be playing that all day. Okay, gentlemen, thank you for your time. Have a very pleasant morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. Uh, and I hope to see you next time. Um, perhaps we shall have some adventuring together on another video. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.